and it's election season. One of the big battles that our authorities will have to fight and the media has to fight also is the menace of fake news. We here at Mirror Now have been constantly bringing you updates. We've been telling you the kind of fake news that is uh, out there, uh, the way it is circulated and how you can actually try and even spot this fake news. Now, you people, in anticipation of uh, the fake news intensity strengthening as uh, the elections get closer has now decided to set up a special WhatsApp helpline, a special social media grievance cell with a special team of top cops who will look into this matter and on a daily basis people can now write in, report fake news, ask their queries in, the UP police will look into it and carry out investigation. But is that really enough? That's the big question because let me give you an example just a few stories that I picked up within 15 minutes as I searched through the internet and I got just these many examples. Hundreds of stories every day on your WhatsApp, on your Facebook, on your Twitter. Everywhere these stories are doing the rounds, circulating and while you yourself may not believe it, there may be many in your friends and family circles who are believing it. In fact, I have often told people that this is fake news, don't believe it. So what is the larger solution? Do we have a plan in mind during election season so that innocent, naive voters don't fall for this narrative and don't make the choice for vote based on this? Now, here are a few examples. Just recently, there was a Facebook Live video that claimed that the Pulwama attack was the handiwork of the BJP. This video actually in that audio clip said that this is an alleged conversation between an unidentified woman and our Home Minister Rajnath Singh and Amit Shah and that this audio clip, if you listen to it, it proves that they actually plan Pulwama for their political benefits. That's the level of fake news that is doing round, most of it of course on WhatsApp. On the other hand, there was another one which had a uh, picture of a young woman who was wearing a headscarf and she held this placard. Uh, which had uh, that said that I support Prime Minister Modi but actually that video and that picture was from a Muslim lady in Washington and there are series of such facts that have uh, fake news that are being corrected every single day you must remember a few days ago there was a video of two Kashmiri vendors in Lucknow who were thrashed when this entire, uh, in the light of the Pulwama attack, when this entire hate against Kashmiris was catching on across the country. Then there were news reports that said, you know, those accused who got arrested for attacking the Kashmiris are actually people linked to the Samajwadi party. Wasn't true. Then there were videos and uh, news reports that said, oh, they are linked to the to a right, uh, right wing group. So how do we separate this? And what action can the government and the police and the election commission take that is a big question tonight. Rakesh Tripathi of the BJP joining me this evening. Vikram Singh, former DGP of Uttar Pradesh and Nikhil Power, editor for Media Nama. Always a pleasure to have you, Nikhil. Let's start with you. The challenge is big. Let's just, you know, and I was trying to just give a few examples. Thanks. There are hundreds of these examples. Are we really in a place, are our authorities in a place to tackle this menace in election season? Well, I, I don't think it's possible for the authorities to be able to deal with the scale of this menace because, you know, let's face it, that they are outnumbered. Uh, there are political parties have almost call center-like operations that create misinformation, that create jokes about uh, the other candidates, that create, um, you know, f uh, false claims about their own candidates. So uh, it's, it's politician versus politician, it's party versus party. Um, and this is only going to increase with time. Uh, let's. The other thing to remember is that this is that fake news is not new. What happens is because of the speed with which messages can be shared and the reach that the messages have, um, the scale of the problem is much bigger. And now technology has moved to a level where the where where photos are, are not only modified but now we've got deep fakes coming up where uh, videos can be fake videos can be created. Of, uh, of individuals uh, allegedly saying things which which no one can detect. So these are very, very difficult to detect and with improvement in technology, it's only going to become tougher. Uh, I'm not sure what the solution to this problem is, but uh, uh, at this point in time, we're fighting a losing battle against fake news.
So let me ask uh, Mr. Vikram Singh this, that uh, where can the police come in? Today they have said we've set up this uh, WhatsApp uh, helpline number and we have a special cell. But uh, UP police, Mr. Singh, has enough on its plate when it comes to regular crime. Are they really in a, uh, a well-equipped place to handle fake news and social media challenges? This Tanvi is a very honest attempt by the UP police to address the problem of fake news. You'd be surprised to know that the largest number of BTEC from IITs and MTEC from IITs are there in the UP cadre of the IPS. And they have it in them. The UP ATS and the STF are the best in the country because of the technical prowess of the IPS officers there. Well, yes, it is like having paper boards to cater to a tsunami of fake news because the vested interests, the special interest groups, and also the four stakeholders, the government, the people, and those special interest groups who generate fake news for a devious purpose, and also the internet service providers. I don't think they have it in them to contain it. In the first place, our laws are absolutely this archaic. We only cater. And the, all the cases that I would analyze and bring it back to just four sections, 120B, 153A, and section 60 of the IT Act. Apart from this, I really don't think if we have any other section, it is like archaic locks, those who were perhaps the cavalry when trying to fight the main battle tanks today. I think we need to pull up our socks and improve our technology. Indeed, we are told that there are 16 crores WhatsApp users in the country, 15 crores Facebook users and 2 crores uh, Twitter users, and not to mention the YouTube users. But the fact remains that we are hopelessly outnumbered when it comes to, but I must compliment the UP police for a brave and a gallant and an honest attempt to address this problem. And I'm sure if they're able to counsel, check, and the cyber forensics would have a long way to go. I don't say that you can address every morphed or every Photoshop picture or a video, but yes, you can make an honest attempt, guide and tell them what is fake and what is right. Mm -hmm. And once you do that, you may recall that in the Muzaffar Nagar riots, a video originated that was responsible for confederating the violence subsequent to when the riots were controlled. And that video clip originated from Afghanistan. But yes, the cottage industry that has emerged, an irresponsible journalist who generate fake news for the purpose, for devious purposes, for the laws of economics. I will stop at that. But yes, UP police has made a very honest attempt and I would compliment them for this honest attempt. And I'm sure they have it in them to at least make an, or make an in attempt to curb and address and educate the people. Education is very important as part of right. addressing this problem. Okay, so Mr. Rakesh Tripathi, the challenge at hand is huge and actually not just for Uttar Pradesh, uh, but for the entire country and for the election commission and for the media organizations uh, to try and uh, tell people what's right and what's not and for political parties. And, uh, and I think all political parties have now been also a victim of this kind of fake news. So uh, where does your party stand on battling this fake news rather than, you know, being silent enablers? तनवीर देखिए आज जो बातें अभी विक्रम सिंह जी कह रहे थे मैं अपने आप को संबद्ध करता हूं उनकी सारी बातों के साथ और उत्तर प्रदेश पुलिस ने जो इस प्रकार की पहल की है ये बहुत स्वागत योग्य पहल है क्योंकि इससे जब पूरा देश चुनाव के जश्न में डूबा हुआ है ऐसे समय में ऐसी कोई फेक न्यूज जो किसी भी प्रकार की जातीय उन्माद या सांप्रदायिक सद्भाव को बिगाड़ने का काम करती है तो निश्चित तौर पर उससे ये जो चुनाव का जश्न है वो भी फीका पड़ता है और उसमें खलल पड़ता है ऐसी स्थिति में पुलिस का एक्टिव होना और प्रो एक्टिव होकर के पहले से ही इस प्रकार की कोई घटना हो और को पहले से रोके जाने की संभावना है अगर उसको हम लगातार सोशल मीडिया को मॉनिटर करने का काम करेंगे और एक कंप्लेंट सेल का गठन करके अगर उत्तर प्रदेश की पुलिस इस पर लगातार निगाह रखेगी इलेक्शन कमीशन इस पर निगाह रखेगा तो निश्चित तौर पर इस तरह की घटनाओं को रोका जा सकेगा राजनीतिक दल के तौर पर सभी राजनीतिक दल सोशल मीडिया की अलग अलग अपने उनके वॉलेंटियर्स काम कर रहे होते हैं और राजनीतिक आरोप प्रत्यारोप के लिए निश्चित तौर पर बहुत सारे फेक स्टेटमेंट्स बनाए जाते हैं लोग करते हैं इस प्रकार की रॉन्ग प्रैक्टिस लेकिन मैं मानता हूं कि राजनीतिक आरोप प्रत्यारोप तक तो फिर भी ठीक होता है लेकिन कोई भी ऐसा एक्शन किसी भी राजनीतिक दल के कार्यकर्ता का या राजनीतिक दल का जो समाज में सांप्रदायिक सद्भाव को बिगाड़ने का काम करता हो या किसी भी प्रकार की हिंसा को जन्म देता हो या अपने आप में बहुत गहन गहन चिंता का कारण बन जाता है ऐसी स्थिति में इसको पूरी तरह से कानून की परिधि में मॉनिटर किया जाना और दांडिक कार्रवाई किया जाना यह बहुत महत्वपूर्ण है और उत्तर प्रदेश पुलिस ने एटीएस के नेतृत्व में जो यह पहल की है यह बहुत स्वागत योग्य है यह पहल पूरे देश भर में अलग अलग राज्यों में अलग अलग राज्यों की पुलिस को भी करना चाहिए और इलेक्शन कमीशन की भूमिका इसमें बहुत महत्वपूर्ण होती है क्योंकि देश 
में इस समय आदर्श आचार संहिता लगी हुई है और कोई भी घटनाक्रम कहीं भी घटता है उसकी प्रशासनिक जवाबदेही जिम्मेदारी इस समय इलेक्शन कमीशन की होती है उसके पास इनहेरेंट पावर होती है इलेक्शन कमीशन इस पूरे मामले को बहुत बारीकी से उसमें कौन सी ऐसी बातें हैं जो सब नहीं लेकिन इलेक्शन कमीशन के पास क्या पावर होती है राकेश जी वो एक नोटिस भेजेंगे तीन बातें हैं अगर किसी आप आप भी ये जानते हैं आपके पार्टी के ने एक एक मिनट मिनट मेरे को पॉइंट खत्म करने दीजिए आप भी जानते हैं आपके पार्टी के नेता भी जानते हैं सभी पॉलिटिकल पार्टीज के नेता ये जानते हैं जो स्पीच बोलनी है जो शब्द यूज करने हैं जिसको उकसाना है उकसा के चली जाइए इलेक्शन कमीशन एक देखेगा स्पीच पे देखेगा इन्वेस्टिगेट करेगा एक चिट्ठी लिखेगा शोकॉज नोटिस आएगा उसके बाद और इन्वेस्टिगेशन होगा फिर वो सोचेंगे कि नहीं ये सही नहीं का ये जो आपने बोला ये गलत था फिर वो पुलिस को बोलेंगे फिर जो पुलिस है वो एक एफआईआर रजिस्टर करेगी आपको बुलाएगी और वो चलता रहेगा तब तक आप इलेक्शन जीत के जा चुके होंगे तो इसमें इलेक्शन कमीशन कुछ नहीं कर पाएगा मैं आपसे ये पूछ रही हूँ कि ये रियलाइजेशन पोलिटिकल पार्टीज में कब आएगी कि हम हेट प्रोपोगंडा यू नो डिवाइसिव तरह की स्पीचेस या कमेंट्स ना बनाए मिसलीडिंग कमेंट्स भी ना बनाए और मैं सिर्फ आप ही की पार्टी की बात नहीं कर रही हूँ मेरे पास इस अभी जो पूरा ये डॉक्यूमेंट है उसमें हर पार्टी के एग्जाम्पल्स है पर क्योंकि आप आए हैं आज मेरे साथ तो मैं आपसे ये सवाल पूछ रही हूँ नहीं देखिए कोई भी राजनीतिक दल इस बात को एंडोर्स नहीं करना चाहता है कि हम किसी भी प्रकार की फेक न्यूज क्रिएट करें या समाज में किसी भी प्रकार के सद्भाव को बिगाड़ने का काम करें लेकिन यह बात सही है कि कई बार पॉलिटिकल मोटिव के कारण कुछ अलग अलग तरह के शक्तियों का इस्तेमाल करके इस प्रकार की चीजें आती है समाज में मैं इसीलिए कह रहा हूं कि कहीं भी अगर लॉ वायलेट काम होता है तो कानून की जिम्मेदारी होती है जहां तक बात निर्वाचन आयोग की है निर्वाचन आयोग ने पिछली बार ही अभी उत्तर प्रदेश का जब विधानसभा का चुनाव हुआ था तो अलग और लोकसभा के चुनाव में भी हमने देखा है अलग अलग राजनीतिक दलों के तमाम बड़े नेताओं को बोलने तक पर प्रतिबंध लगा दिया था तो इलेक्शन इलेक्शन कमीशन अगर कहीं सोशल मीडिया पर इस प्रकार के कोई स्टेटमेंट्स अगर पा रहा है तो वो अपनी एक्शन ले सकता है कैंडिडेट के द्वारा अगर उसको कहीं फंडिंग है या कैंडिडेट के द्वारा कहीं अगर उसको प्रोत्साहित किया जा रहा है तो उसका कैंडिडेचर भी रद्द किया जा सकता है उसका चुनाव प्रचार भी रोका जा सकता है उसके पास अलग अलग प्रकार की कई शक्तियां हैं इंपॉर्टेंट यह है कि अगर उसको मॉनिटर करेंगे और उन शक्तियों को एक्सरसाइज करने का काम करेंगे तो निश्चित तौर पर इसके बेहतर परिणाम सामने आएंगे राजनीतिक दल के तौर पर भारतीय जनता पार्टी अपनी राजनीतिक जिम्मेदारी को मानती है और कभी कभी आप लोग भी बैग जाते हैं एक एग्जाम्पल ये है हम रोकने का प्रयास करते हैं नहीं नहीं कभी कभी तो सभी लोग बैग जाते हैं और जब तक की पता चले और वो विड्रॉ हो इंटरनेट ऐसी चीज है की तब तक तो बहुत देर हो चुकी होती है हजारों लाखों लोगों के पास वो इन्फॉर्मेशन चली जाती है एक एग्जाम्पल बीजेपी का फिर मैं कांग्रेस का Amit Malviya, head of BJP's IT cell, tweeted, "Refreshing to see Prime Minister wear his faith on his sleeve. He is the first head of the state to visit Kumbh in all these years." Now, while it is a safe uh, phrasing of sentence because he is saying in all these years, it sounds like, "Oh, Prime Minister Modi is the first Prime Minister to visit the Kumbh Mela and take a dip and do the aarti." Work for their vote bank, but the fact of the matter is, uh, as far as head of states are concerned, our current President Kovin, uh, Ramnath Kovin, also. Went. Our first president also visited uh, uh, Kumbh Mela. Our first prime minister Jawaharlal Nehru was present there, made the arrangements personally, and, and, and so it could be misleading when the head of the BJP IT cell tweets like that. Here is an example from the Congress end. Several workers of the Congress Party's information technology cell tweeted image of a classroom of a government school in Delhi that was constructed in 2017 under the AAP government. But they all tweeted this to say Congress President Rahul Gandhi will kickstart Lok Sabha campaign of Delhi Congress by addressing booth workers convention today at Indira Gandhi Stadium, and then they highlighted how booth workers are actually studying here. And the hashtag was Dil Mange Congress. The photograph was taken by Birhan Kino for HD in a school in Delhi, which was obviously created uh, uh, and is functional under the AAP government. So. IT cells of all political parties are equally guilty of perpetuating false news, misleading news, and that's the dangerous part this election season. Nikhil, you wanted to make a point? Go ahead, please. Yeah, see, see, Tanvi, I think one thing that's really important to remember is that incorrect information is not illegal. Something that that is disturbing public order, inciting violence, is a separate thing. There is mass polarization, mass changing of opinion uh, of particular candidates or or, or uh, around particular issues that is happening not just from within the country, but it can also happen by external forces, external factors like we saw in the U.S. 
in case of Cambridge and Analytica. So uh, we have to be very, very careful, at least when it comes to coordinated activity where IT cells are themselves creating this, this kind of information. I think the election commission needs to hold political parties to greater account than they do citizens or, or people who create misinformation. You know, Twitter handles, official uh, pages, official groups uh, of political parties that share misinformation. I think they need to be taken to task by the election commission. But we have to remember that incorrect information is not illegal. And so under what law, under what, what jurisdiction will any government authority act against someone who is spreading some misinformation? They can always come back and say, oh, I thought it was true. Hmm. How do you hold them legally liable for that then? Correct. Here is one more example. There was a tweet, a uh, picture of, uh, of a screen grab of a tweet of Arvind Kejriwal that went viral. And that said, if Wing Commander Abhinandan takes VRS, that's voluntary retirement, from services, we are ready to offer him a Lok Sabha ticket from any constituency he wishes to contest from. This was a fake tweet. This wasn't real. It was nowhere on Arvind Kejriwal's timeline. Mr. Vikram Singh, like we, uh, Nikhil is pointing out, when you, there is false information and then there is obviously, you know, communally inciting hateful propaganda information, divisive uh, information, where you have sections uh, under the law to act against people. What do you do when you, uh, when somebody just turns around and says, oh, sorry, I got it wrong? Tanvi, it is simply a matter of investigation. Nikhil is a scientist and I am an ex-police officer. Reverse, go, re, go reverse engineering and go backwards. There is a fake news and there is a malicious news. When you have a malicious news, nobody can get away and say that I'm sorry because you had a sense of purpose and intent. And if you are a thorough investigator, you will go get into the intestines of the person and find out who paid whom and how much and what were the words that were supposed to be uttered by that person or right in that person. A skillful investigator will get into the jugular of the person, the mischievous person, the mischief maker, and get to the bottom of the whole episode. You in Macedonia, then we would realize that there are 200 people in Donald Trump's fans club, and they are just generating fictitious stories like this day in and day out. We are fast learners, and we have also replicated this experiment in India. People are gullible, people are emotional, and all these stories that you have narrated play into the emotions of us Indians. Now is the time and the UP police has come out with a very healthy practice and the best practice I would say a proactive measure to educate the people, educate the investigators and understand that you have algorithms and use artificial intelligence, big data analytics. You can get to the bottom of it if you choose to. Selective five cases in every district and I'm sure you will have something to be proud of okay. in 15 days. Quick, quick response from Nikhil on that. Nikhil, can we, can reverse engineering and, you know, taking those, follow, retracing those steps get us there, especially even today as we speak in this whole government versus social media giant face-off is taking place. Are they giving us that platform to find out where the WhatsApp message came from? No, and look, they can't do that because, frankly, it'll uh, to, in order to to provide traceability for users, they will have to uh, disable end-to-end -end encryption, which basically makes everyone vulnerable. If you if you remove encryption, all messages will be accessible. The people's private messages can be potentially read by hackers or even by the government, and that's a disproportionate response. Uh, the with with WhatsApp, the uh, really the problem with 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 misinformation is the velocity with which it is sent and the expanse which it is created. And, and this is an organized um, attempt on WhatsApp where political parties have millions of groups and they start feeding these messages into those groups. I think the problem has to be addressed at the top. Political parties themselves have to be held accountable as originators of this. There are IT cells that have call center-like operations which do these things. Yes. I, it, it's hypocritical almost for the for, for for you know for political parties to criticize fake news when they have themselves got machinery that creates it. I don't think it, it is it is uh, it's possible to trace, and I don't think it is even rational to disable encryption to help tracing uh, the originators of these messages because that will compromise all of our privacy. Yes. You know what I think though will happen, I, I, and I completely agree with you, it is hypocritical for any political party to point fingers at the others or say, oh, we should all be responsible. A fact of the matter is, it's a race. 
who has a more active IT cell, who has a more malicious IT cell and an army of trolls and an army of these supporter groups who are mushrooming by hundreds on social media, on Facebook and on Twitter. And it's a race between the Congress and, and the BJP and the Samajwadi Party and the Aam Aadmi Party and every other party in their own small ways are trying to do this. Now what you can also do is set up a department uh, uh, under your police and say that you're going to crack down on fake news but do it only selectively onto the groups that you know are working against you, politically speaking, fake news generation or content-wise speaking. It will be great if we actually see crack down on those WhatsApp groups where this malicious news is manufactured and spread and then from there on it just multiplies and, and goes viral within minutes and all our family groups will actually be getting those messages. But will the crackdown be honest and genuine and fair and not selective? That is the other big question. I just want to give you two more examples before we wrap this up. Here is another example, a video that showed a group of men roughing up this man who was wearing a burqa in Goa went viral and it was being shared with a post that said a burqa clad Sanghi is attempting to tarnish the image of Muslims. Now if you look at that video and it gives you this narrative, you might as well believe it. But here is the truth. The incident happened on February 16 this year when a burqa clad man actually was only attempting to and it's, it, 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 this is horrifying to uh, at another level he was attempting to enter the ladies toilet this did happen in Goa but the narrative is completely different and the narrative that is being pushed now is meant to divide you is meant to incite you here is another one a video circulated on social media claims that Pakistani flags were wa waved at a congress rally in Tumkur Karnataka and then their video you can see in the distance there is this green flag with white things on it. The fact is that it was a green colored flag which was not the Pakistani flag. It was in fact the banner of the Indian Union Muslim League, a political party which is based in Kerala. But who's going to really watch carefully and try and identify that? Most people will just look at it, say oh okay and share it and pass it on. Don't do that. If you cannot verify it, if you do not know for sure that it is true, do not do that, especially not in election season where things are any which is very sensitive and this could actually begin to influence voters. We'll bring so lots more of such stories to you in the run-up to these elections. But thank you so much for joining us right now.